Before you sit down, before you sit down, this is Easter Sunday. Happy Easter, everybody. Are you happy to be here today? Well, sh- I, need you to, I need you to do this. Five, six, ten people around you. Just look at them and say, Christ is risen indeed. All right? Do that for me real quick. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Go ahead and have a seat. As you sit down, I'm just not going to talk very, very long today, but I'm going to talk about what is so very important for all of us to hear on this Easter Sunday. I think the best way for us to start this morning, though, is because Christ died, was buried, and rose again, then he deserves all of our praise and all of our glory and all of our honor. Let's let him know right now how thankful we are for overcoming, overcoming the grave. Awesome, awesome. Very good. Now, do me a favor. Go ahead and grab your notes, grab a pen, grab a Bible. Um, If you don't have a Bible, that's okay. We got it all printed out on the notes for you and also up here. If you don't have a Bible at home, you might find a Bible there in the seat in front of you, all right? Uh, Maybe there's a Bible in the seat in front of you. If you don't have one at home, let that be a gift from us to you. You go ahead and take that with you. Take it home. It's our gift to you. If you're here today and you got 12 of our Bibles at your house, though, bring it back and quit stealing from the church, all right? Good deal. Good deal. All right. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much this morning as we come and we celebrate the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ. Father, we ask this morning that it won't only be a head thing, but it will be a heart thing, something that sinks in, something that we know, we believe, and we live with each and every day. Father, we thank you so very much for the gift that has been given to each one of us. My prayer this morning is that if there is somebody here today who does not know your son, Jesus Christ, that they will, before they leave this place, put their faith and trust in him, having the assurance of eternal life. Thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Guys, so, so good to see all of you here today. Um, Man, I tell you, some of you I haven't seen for a while. Some of you I see every Sunday. Some of you I've never, ever seen before. Um, But are you happy to be here today? Good. Good, good, good. Here's the deal. I I know some of you are happy to be here and you just made it known. Some of you are probably going, yeah, I'm only here because grandmother made me come to church today. And I understand that. I understand that. And I understand some of you here today are kind of going, church is really not my place. This is not where I've been. I don't really feel comfortable. It's not where I belong. And let me just tell you, I get it. I get it. Believe me, I get it. I understand. There, there's a mom on Easter Sunday morning went into her son to wake him up to come to church. Goes in there, son, get up. Time to go to church. It's Easter Sunday. He goes, mom, I don't want to go to church this morning. You can't make me go to the church. Son, you better get up and go to church with me. It's Easter Sunday morning. Mom, I don't like church. They don't even like me at church. I don't want to go to church. Son, you better get up now. We're going to church on Easter Sunday morning. And the son said, Mom, just give me two good reasons, two good reasons why I got to go to church with you today. And she said, well, number one, you're 53 years old. (laughs) And number two, you're the pastor. So let me tell you, I get it. I get it. And the truth is, probably a lot of us are going, I don't really care about going to church because, well, you know, I've got a lot of hurt. I've got a lot of pain in my life. I've had a lot of sorrow. I've had a lot of suffering. Do you you know, just I was sent uh, uh, an article that came out on Friday from the New York Times where one of the writers of the New York Times basically wrote an article that says, it's about time we all forget about God. And he was coming from the standpoint of, well, there's war. There's evil in this world. There are terrible things that are happening. And so why would we turn to God during a time like this? He's God. He could get rid of all. In fact, he says God is the reason for it all. And I would suggest to you this morning that if you're one of those who so often 
turns away from God through the pain and the trial and suffering, I would ask you maybe to turn to God and find what he brings through the pain and the suffering and the heartache that we all face. And that's what I hope for you to do this morning. Just real quick to know that we're all kind of on the same page. How many of you, just within the last three months, since the beginning of this year, have had some hurt, pain, and sorrow happen in your life? Yeah. And we're not even talking 2021 or 2020, are we? We're just talking in the last couple months. That's why this morning's message is titled, Life Hurts, But Here's Hope. Life hurt for the disciples. I buried my father less than a month ago. You buried your father less than a month ago. I understand what you're going through. And the reason I understand what you're going through is my wife buried her father just a couple months ago. And probably every single one of us in here could raise our hand and say, yeah, I've got some hurt. I've got some pain. I've got some sorrow going on in my life. And that's why you're here on Easter Sunday morning. Because there is a message of hope. There is a message of hope. That's not the end. That's not all. That's what we hear and see. John 16, 22, I'm going to bring you to this passage of scripture here this morning. And we're going to see 22 and then verse 33. But let me kind of tell you what's going on right here, okay? This is right before Jesus is about to be betrayed and then taken to the cross where he will be killed sacrificed and he gets his disciples together and he says hey guys I need you to know something okay listen up right here you are going to have some terrible terrible sorrow but that's not the end notice so you have sorrow now but I will see you again then he says you will rejoice and no one can rob you of that joy I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Check it out. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. Again, raise your hand if you've had some trials and sorrows. Raise, keep them raised if you've had many. Yeah. That's what he said. But take heart because I have overcome the world. Do you see the message right there? It's the message of hope and the message of Easter, the message that our sorrows and our pain and our hurt it doesn't stop there. Just this week, guys, just this week, the conversations that I've had, there's one girl I sat down with, and she was overwhelmed, so overwhelmed with what's going on in her life and the circumstances and the situations, she was saying, I just, I just want to end it all right now. I just want to end it all right now. I want to and then, then I'm on the, on the computer and I'm typing out an email message from a guy who had sent me a message about 20 years ago or something that happened 20 years ago where he's, he's telling me this hurt and this pain and it was so deep and so, he goes, it made me turn away from God and made me turn away from the church because of all that hurt and that pain that I have going on. And, and then, get this, I got a text as did the other pastors just this morning. And the text said, from, from somebody who has been a faithful, faithful member of our church for so very long, watches every Sunday online. And the text is, is from his wife that says, they're telling me he only has a few more hours left. And so we see sorrow and sorrow and pain and pain and hurt and hurt. On and on. God, just last night, just last night, I'm, I'm up there and we're walking towards the, the field where all the Easter eggs are. By the way, how many of you came to that last night? Yeah, that was a lot of fun, huh? Easter eggs everywhere and kids everywhere. And it's such a, but, but as I'm walking up that direction, a car pulls up next to me and rolls down the window. And I look inside and I'm like, oh my goodness, where have you been? It was somebody I hadn't seen in like three years. And she said, well, I got to tell you that, uh, that I had this hurt, this, this pain with somebody. 
I said, I, I've been trying to contact you. I, I said, did you, what happened? Because you were my friend on Facebook. And she goes, I unfriended you. <laughs> and I said, wait a second now, wait a second now. She goes, I unfriended a lot of people, but I unfriended you. I said, why'd you unfriend me? And I didn't do nothing to you. <laughs> and it goes back to a hurt and a pain that she had with somebody who abandoned her. And because of that, she cut everybody else out of her life, too. And again, I said, but, but why me? Why me? I, I, I'm your friend on Facebook. You go in and you unfriend me? And, and she goes, well, Pastor, it's like this. You see, um, she goes, when I got that hurt that happened to me, I, I, uh, I started putting on Facebook a, a whole bunch of cuss words. And I thought to myself, <laughs> I can't let my pastor see these cuss words. And so that's why I unfriended you. By the way, if you unfriend me, I'll know you've been... <laughs> nah. but, but, but it was the thing, and that was the message. And, and through all of this, through all of this, I want you to know it doesn't matter what, 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 what they think or what they think of it. What matters is what God thinks of you. And how you come to him through it all, he says... I want you to know, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. And some of you this morning need to hear just that. Because the temptation is, I've got hurt and I've got pain and I've got sorrow and I want to run from God. But what if, what if, what if all of that is simply being allowed to draw you closer to God. Did you see the, the illustration up here, the teenagers? They did so well on this. And, and here is Christ. And through all of this, he's saying, come to me, come to me. Don't run from me, come to me. And it's all of these things that get a grip on us and hold us and, and try to steer us away. But no, he's saying, come to me because it's only in me that you're going to find life, that you're going to find joy, true joy, real joy. And that's the message of Easter, guys. That's the message of the resurrection. That even through the sorrow and the pain and the hurt that we face here today, there is one who loves us most. One who went to the cross, sacrificed himself for us to bring us to him so that one day we would have every tear wiped away. He would defeat death and sin would be no more. Here's the deal. This morning, I'm going to give you a few things, and these are really kind of my things. When I say my things, yeah, because like I said, we've had the hurt, and Kim and I have been navigating through the suffering that comes, the grief. But through it all, we can have this, this deep joy. Through it all, we can have this great hope in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I'm going to give you what it means, and I want you to write them down here this morning. The resurrection means that even when life hurts, our God is still in control. Do you believe that? Even when life hurts, our God is still in control. Let me ask you real quick, a quick survey. How many of you look out on the landscape of the world right now and it just seems like people are getting crazier and crazier out there, huh? Yeah. I mean, it, it does. It seems like people are getting crazier and angrier and more upset. And, 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 and I mean, I, I've seen the way some of you drive. <laughs> uh, incidentally, um, if you're, if you're a part of Community Bible Church and you're one of those kind of drivers and you got a magnet of the church on the back, take that off, okay? You're, you're not helping anybody, okay? But no, we look out and it's it just, you look and you go, things are getting crazier all the time and it seems as if this world is spinning out of control. We, we feed ourselves the news that comes and we're going, oh my goodness. But you realize in the same way, the disciples were going, guys, it seems to be getting crazier and crazier. Do you see, they, they've taken my Jesus. They've taken, and they've nailed him to a cross. That's not good, right? That's awful. That's terrible. That's bad. They've murdered him. 
Who are we going to follow now? That's awful. That's terrible. That's hurt. That's pain. That's sorrow. That's bad. It says right here, Romans 6, 9 through 10, we know that when Jesus was raised from the dead. Now, I want to stop right there. And we're here celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But do we also realize that there would be no resurrection to celebrate if there weren't first a death on Friday? And what I'm saying is the reason we celebrate today the resurrection is because there was a death, there was a hurt, there was pain, there was sorrow. But even when it looked like God was completely out of control, we see that that wasn't the end, that Sunday was still on its way and the resurrection was coming. If we just look at the Friday, then we find ourselves in despair. But if we look now at the resurrection, we, we see the purpose behind the Friday. We see how beautiful the cross actually is. The word stunning. You ever use the word stunning? Maybe you see a landscape and go, wow, that's stunning. Or maybe, maybe uh, men, uh, you're, about your wife, you say, oh, she's stunning, stunningly beautiful. What does it mean to be stunning? It means in some way that image just hit me so hard that it kind of shook me. It, it, it caused me to stop. It caused me something is stunning. But I would, I would ask, have you ever been stunned by the cross? Is, have, you ever been, have you ever seen what Christ did on the cross and it just, bam, hit you so hard? Not, not, a, not a, hey, uh, yeah, yeah, I know the story of the cross of Jesus Christ, and, and we come to church on Easter Sunday, and, and it's great, and then we go eat ham. No, uh, I'm, I'm talking about where it hits you, where, where it hits you so hard it goes from here to here, and you see the beauty of what Jesus Christ did for you, and you realize, you realize that there was a purpose and a plan that God had, even for the pain that came first. And I know, I know. Some of you are going through the pain right now. You're going through the hurt right now, and you don't see a purpose or a plan in all of that. But that's the message of the resurrection. Do you realize that you can't have a miracle without first having a mess? If you, you got to have a mess in your life before you get a miracle. If there's, if there's not going to be a miracle, if you don't first have a mess, because there'll be no need for a miracle. But it's the, mir- it's, it's the mess that gives way to the miracle. It's the mess that allows God to do something and show you something in this life. Real quick, how many of you have a mess of a life? You ever feel like that? You got a mess in your life? Then I would say congratulations. Because... Maybe, just maybe, God's about to do something miraculous and use what somebody might have meant for evil and turn it out for that which is good. That's what God is able to do. He says, we know that when Jesus was raised from the dead, it was a signal of the end of death as the end. Never again will death have the last word. When Jesus died, he took sin down with him, but alive he brings God down to us. In Revelation 1.18, I am the living one. I died, Jesus says, but look, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and the grave. In other words, I'm still in control. I'm still in control. It might not look like it, but I'm still in control. Listen, if you've got a mess going on in your life, if you've got pain, if you've got sorrow, if you've got problems, let me tell you, I believe that God is busy doing some of his best work during your darkest moments. And you can believe that too. It's the pain that precedes the promise, the blessing. I was working out this, this last week, you know, little, little barbells, little weights. You got a uh, sun is starting to shine a little more. What is it? Uh, sun's out, gun's out, right? So I was having to do a little working out, you know, just doing a little working out and everything. And as I was working out, bam, suddenly, oh, I felt something in my back. I felt something that wasn't right. It's come, something kind of got pinched back there. And so, so I was hurting. That night I went to bed thinking it would go away. And, 
And I hurt all night long. I got up the next day, and it's still just, oh, this terrible pain. So I said, yeah, I got to go to the chiropractor. And she said, yeah, yeah, they're open today. We'll get over there. And so I go to the chiropractor. I walk in through the door, and the chiropractor says, all right, all right, come back here. And puts me on this table and starts stretching me and bending me all sorts of ways and, and uh, fixing this and popping that. And, and so, okay, okay. He says, you're good to go. And so I walk out of the room I was in into the reception room and when I walk into the reception room there's there's this woman this lady who's who's standing there and she's she's uh I was, I was like wow oh my goodness like an angel sent from God because she's holding a box of donuts <laughs> and, uh, and I'm like I'm confused I don't know what's going on and and uh, the, the, the chiropractor's wife, who was there at the reception, she says to me, she goes, oh, oh let me tell you, when, when you came in today, um, I quickly called the lady who owns the, the, the donut shop a couple doors down and told her that you were here at our office. And she decided she wanted to bring you over a free dozen donuts. Now, I'm telling you guys, how many of you like donuts? I like donuts. And, you know, and there are these donuts and there are those donuts, but she takes donuts to another level, okay? And she's there. It's like, here, these are for you. I brought these, and these are just for you. Wow. Donuts. And I opened them up, and they're, they're like, oh, my goodness, there's all the different flavors, and it's beautiful. It's wonderful. And you're going, why is he telling us about donuts? Okay, follow me. Follow me, okay? Do you not realize that I would have never got the donuts if I hadn't <laughs> had the pain in the first place. Right? The pain was a, a setup for me to get the donuts. <laughs> there was purpose in my pain. Purpose that I didn't know I had. And, and now, now here's the deal. If I, if I never I had the pain in the first place, I would have never received the promise, the donuts. But listen, so many people, so many people are going through suffering and hurt and they bail out before the blessing. They say, forget you, God. And they turn and go, the no, no, no. Look to him and see his goodness even through that, even through that hurt, even through that pain. And know this, that our God is still in control. Our God is still in control. Second thing I want you to write down, guys. Number two, the resurrection means that even when life hurts, our joy is on the way. Our joy is on the way. And notice I said on the way. There's not only a, some joy now, but our great joy is still to come. Do you know that? Do you, do you believe that? Uh, the Bible tells us that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has planned for those who love him. In other words, we have no idea what's about to happen, what's about to come, but it's bigger and better than you ever thought or dreamed of, which gives you some joy now knowing what is on the way. Psalms 35 is an anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes with the morning. Let me ask, how many of you were those, uh, those annoying children that, that when, when, when you were on your way in your parents' car down to vacation, you kept going, are we there yet? How many of you did that, huh? Yeah. Are we there yet? Mom, Dad, are we there yet? Hey, hey, ah, shut your mouth, kid. We got 36 hours left. Ah, and you realized you knew that you were on the journey, but you weren't yet at the destination. The destination is where you wanted to be. The destination was to come, but you had to wait a little while, right? You had to wait a little. And that's the same thing for the child of God. For those who have put their faith and trust in Christ, for those who know the love that he has for them and the way he has prepared for them, they're able to go, well, I know it's coming. I know it's coming. And I can see it coming. I know it will be here before I even know it. I know it's on the way. And I have joy now today. I have hope today because I know this 
is on the way. Uh, I got this app. I got this app on my phone. How many of you have that? I don't have my phone with me, but I got this little app on my phone, and uh, it's, it's relatively new for me, but it's called, it's the Chick-fil-A app. Anybody? <laughs> you got the Chick-fil-A app? Yeah. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? Uh, let me tell you why I love this app. Not only do I get, re- hey, um, I, I got upgraded recently. I'm now a red member, okay? That's pretty special from what I understand. And, and you get free stuff when you use the app. But you know what's really, what I really love about the app, and I kind of discovered this maybe uh, six months ago or so, is that, that, that I can sit at my house and I can get on the app and I can be in my pajamas and I can make an order and Chick-fil-A will bring me to my house. And some of you are going, whoa. How many of you remember the days when, when you could only get pizza delivered to your house? Yeah? How many of you can remember even before that when nothing ever got delivered to your house? <laughs> All us old folks, right? But now I can get Chick-fil-A delivered directly to my house. And what I love about this little app is it's got a little car, a little Chick-fil-A car that goes on the map. And so it's, it's so fun for me. I don't know if you do this, but, but as soon as I order, I'm, I'm watching that map. And I see, I see the little car, I see the little car, and before you know it, the car starts driving in my direction. And I see it go down this street and then down this street, and as it gets closer, I get more excited. I start to drool a little more, you know? I, I start calling for Kim, food's coming, Chick-fil-A's coming, come in here. Come on, hurry up, it's about to be here. It's what I call the gospel of Chick-fil-A, the good news, right? <laughs> It's, being, it's, it's arriving, it's arriving as it starts to get closer and closer, I start to do my happy dance, you know, it's, it's on its way. And guys, when you're in the middle of sorrow, when you're in the middle of hurt, when you're in the middle of pain, look to your Savior and remember what he promised, hey, I'm on my way, I'm coming, I'm going to be there before you know it, keep your eyes on him, keep your eyes on him, our joy is on the way. Revelation 21, verse 4, it says, He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. That's what's on the way. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death. Did you hear what I just said? No more death. Can't we get a little bit of... No more death, no more sorrow. Yeah, I, can, I, can, I can get with that. It says there will be no more crying. Okay, okay, I like that. There will be no more pain. Oh, yeah. Right? He says, that's what I'm bringing. That's what's coming. That day will be here. He says, all of these things are gone forever. How can he say all of these things are gone forever? I want to again point you back to the cross. Because of the cross, because of the cross, death will be no more. It's the resurrection. Because of the cross, there will be no pain, no more sorrow, no more suffering. It's all going away. Because of his great love for you. Are you shocked by that love? Has that love ever sunk in? Has it ever hit you? I find that it hits those who hurt the most, the hardest. Because you know that pain, you know that sorrow, but then to see that kind of love, that amazing kind of love. Jesus said the greatest love, no greater love, is there than when a man lays down his life for his friend, for you. And that's what he's done. I, Kim and I went jogging. Uh, we used to jog maybe a couple of years ago. We'd get out there and jog a little bit, trying to stay healthy, you know. And, and we'd go out jogging. Well, the way we would jog is, uh, we always do it this way, is where I always make sure that, that the curb is over here, and there's the road, and I keep my wife between me and the curb, you know. That's kind of what, what a man does, right? That's what I do for my wife. I want to I protect her a little bit from any cars that might be coming by. And, and so I'm just kind of there to protect and guard her. Well, we're out jogging one day. We're out jogging one day. And we're going into a neighborhood we don't often go into. 
And as we're jogging along, suddenly I hear this snarl, this bark. Oh, my goodness, I know what's coming. I glance over, and there's this, there's this dog jumping at that moment off its front porch, charging across. The, now, I, I got to tell you guys, my wife, she, dogs make her a little bit, I, that she doesn't know, make her a little bit nervous anyway when she's out. And, and I knew she was going to be terrified. But here comes this dog just full on running right at us. And I, inst- I, had, to, I had to do something. Why? Because I love her. I love her. I love my wife. I knew I had to protect her. And so real quick, in that moment, I jump in between her and this oncoming dog. And, 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 and as I jump in between her and that dog, suddenly that dog leaps with everything in it. You could see the teeth. You could hear the growl. That dog was, I mean, and that dog just leapt up. And at that moment, that last second, I stuck my foot out like that and caught that dog right under the chin. The dog was only about that big right there, but uh, um, (laughs) that's beside the point, okay? But man, I sent that dog squealing back into its yard. But you see, you see what I'm saying though, right? Yeah, the, listen, I don't want you to miss this, guys, okay? Jesus loves you so much. He put himself on the cross to take the hits, to take the beating, to take the nails, to take the sin. All on himself, so that you could live with him forever. That's the gospel. Which brings us to the very last thing. The resurrection means that even when life hurts, our lives will never truly end. You have a home in heaven for eternity. If you so choose. Jesus said, John eleven twenty five, 25, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Or this one. I think you might know it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. They're in front of the gates to the Easter eggs. Last night, I'm handing out brochures as people are coming in, kids coming in with empty baskets, baskets ready to get some eggs, parents following behind them. And, and then that's when, that's when I, hear, I hear a little voice yell my name, and I look up, and it's my, it's my great niece, uh, my sister's granddaughter. And uh, her name's Nora, and she's five and a half years old. And she comes running up to me and gives me a big old hug, and and that's when, that's when my sister gets up there and says, Nora, ask your Uncle Bo what you asked me a little while ago. And so I, I got down at, at her face and I said, well, Nora, what is it? And she said, how can I know that I'm going to go to heaven when I die? Five and a half five and a half, and, and it was right there I explained the best I could, as simple as I could to a five and a half year old who wants to know. And that's what I want to do right now, is as best I can explain to you the greatest news ever, and pray that today is the day that you will finally receive the amazing gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. Will you bow your heads and close your eyes? Friend, if you have never put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, I want you to know something. Jesus loves you. 
God loves you so much. He sent Jesus who lived a perfect, sinless life to willingly give his life for your sin and for my sin. You see, it's our sin that separates us from God. It's our sin that really has brought the hurt and the harm and the pain and the sorrow and the destruction in this world. But that's not the end of the story. God says, I want to bring you back to myself. And he provided a way, and the way is Jesus. And right here, right now today, if you would simply believe, and right where you sit, you can talk to Jesus quietly in your own mind. You can say something like this. Say, Jesus, today I believe. I do believe that you died for me. I do believe that you love me that way. And right now, the best I know how, I'm receiving you as my Savior. Come into my life, forgive me of my sin, and be my God and my Savior, my friend forever and ever. Friend, when you pray that prayer and you mean it with your heart, the Bible says you can know you have eternal life. So say thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me today. Heads bowed, eyes closed. If you prayed that prayer for the first time here on this Easter Sunday, would you do me a favor and just kind of look up and make eye contact with me? Saying today, I put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Amen. Awesome. That's good. That's amen. Oh, that's great. Amen. Awesome. That's wonderful, man. So good. That's great. Okay, awesome, man. That's great. That's wonderful. Amen, amen. That's cool. That's so great. I see you. That's great, man. Way to go. That's awesome. Hey, that's so good. Amen. I see you. Awesome. Awesome, man. That's awesome. That's so great. I, I, I might not see you very well in here, but let me tell you something. God doesn't miss you. In fact, you're his. He's yours forever and ever and ever and ever. Father, I thank you so much for those who prayed that prayer here today, who invited your son, Jesus Christ, into their life. Father, thank you for the assurance of that eternal life. Thank you for the joy that is before us still because of your son, Jesus Christ. Father, thank you so much. And we celebrate, we celebrate this Easter because of your love for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.